Taking calibration frames like darks, flats, dark flats, bias is really the one thing that we can do to bring our images to life. We don't have dust spots, we don't have hairs, all that kind of stuff. What's up guys, it's Chad. Welcome back to the Easy Astro Images channel. Today, I'm gonna show you how I take flats and dark flats with my Hyperstar. You can do this with a Rasa. This is what I used to do with my Rasa 8. Real simple, you're just gonna need a couple items. Well, of course, the first thing you're gonna have to have is a dew shield. So this is what's gonna get you some elevation so we can put the rest of our items up here on top to take our flat frames. And then we're gonna start off with the white t-shirt and we might have to put some more material on top of here and you'll see why in a second. Then we have just a simple LED tracing table here that you can get off of Amazon for like, 20 bucks depending upon the size that you would need for your telescope. I also recommend picking up an extra long USB cable. The ones that come with these are a little short, so you might need an extension or a micro USB extension. And then what we're gonna do is just go ahead and turn that on. Then of course we have Nina fired up and I just got done shooting some images last night with my Rasa 6 or C6 with Hyperstar, and we need to get some flats. So things are a little complicated when it comes to taking flats with these things because the F2 speed, you really, really gotta watch where your histogram and everything like that is. If I do just a one second flat, you can see that my histogram is blown out at 65,000. So this baby is maxed out. Now I can go up there and start dimming the panel, but I don't think that's gonna be enough. So what we're gonna have to do actually is start layering some material on top of there. Now you can start with just a basic piece of white paper here. You might need to fold it in a couple pieces in order to get things down to the right exposure. I really like these neutral density films from Amazon. They're like 20 bucks for a pack of like 12 and you can cut them to sizes. I used to have this taped to a bigger light panel. So I put that double layer of paper on there and let's just take a one second shot and see where we're at now. All right, so we are at 4,000 and that is gonna be a little bit too low. So let's go ahead and turn that up. I like to take about a two and a half second flat. It's just kind of what I do. It's always worked for me. I try to get that ADU around 20,000. Then we'll flip over to the framing wizard and Nina to do that. And now we're coming in at about 19 to 18,000, which is gonna be perfect. So we can go ahead and set this baby up. So if we go into the flat wizard here, I've already got my directory set and I wanna do 25 flats and 25 dark flats. So what that's gonna do is take 25 like this, then it's gonna tell me to go ahead and turn everything off and cover things up. Now your dark flats are gonna match the same exposure value as your flats and they're gonna help calibrate all of your data on both sides of that equation from the dark and the light side. You do want to be careful though and make sure that you're not shooting dark flats in a lit area, especially with the dew shield because will, there will be light leak that's going on through things like this. So it's always best to do these when it's maybe darker in the morning or in the evening time. Here in my garage, I can turn all the lights off and just leave everything covered up just like it is right there and go ahead and shoot the dark flats. So if you look at Nina here, I have my histogram value set at about 30% plus or minus 10%. So that's gonna get us right there in that one third of our histogram area because we are shooting for around 18 to 23,000 ADUs and our chips are capable of 65,000. So it's close to a third and I want a minimum exposure of two seconds and a maximum of five. And all I have to do is just hit play since we've already verified it and it's gonna go through and start snapping the flats. You can see that we're getting our flat frames there. The exposure is somewhere around 2.6 seconds is what it's saying. So we're just gonna let it rip off 25 of these. Then it's gonna tell us to go ahead and cover the scope which means I'll have to turn all the lights off in here and turn off that flat panel. Then we can get our dark flats going on. 
And it's just a perfect example here of what a flat frame does. We've got some vignette going on out there. We've got a really strong core in the center and we have another ring. Probably could do some spacing adjustment on my Hyperstar. This is literally the first time I've got done using it. So I can kind of see that. Usually the field would be illuminated a little bit more evenly, but the flats are gonna correct all this for the frames if the frames look kind of messed up. So I really wouldn't waste a lot of time out of it unless you're getting really bad data. We'll see how it all works out in one of the next videos. All right, now it's done with that and it's time to move on to the dark flats. So it wants us to go ahead and cover the scope. So we're gonna turn everything off and then press okay. So when you're doing flats in the winter time, it's not so bad, but during the summertime, you might have a hard time reaching your desired cooler temperature. I like to set my cooling temperature the same as I would for my lights and my darks just out of habit. It's not necessary really with flat frames, but it's just something to think about. I like to keep everything consistent so that way I don't make any mistakes at all. Everything is always the same, just makes things easier. Okay, those are all done. And just to prove a point, it's very, very cold in the garage and we are running at 38% cooler power right now to keep the chip at negative 10. Now during the summertime, you're gonna have to adjust. You might wanna shoot at zero degrees or minus five degrees, but you'll notice you'll, you will really hear that fan kicking into overdrive trying to drop the temperature, especially if you don't have one of the newer cameras like a 533 or 2600 that has the two stage tech cooling built into it. So now that that's all done, we're just gonna turn everything off, shut it down, rip those over onto our thumb drive, take them to our main computer, get the scope covered back up to protect it from dust and all that kind of stuff. And we'll be ready to go. That's all you need to do. Super easy and inexpensive and very, very effective. Thanks a lot guys. Please continue to subscribe and we'll see you on the next video.